So this is my final Halloween painting for this year. And I, I realize it's a bit late because um, Halloween was a week ago. But it's kind of how it, it fell this month with my paintings. So this is the most blatantly Halloween of the images that I did this year for Halloween. Because the first ones with Medusa and Hecate, or I actually don't know how her name's pronounced, the, the lovely horned goddess of witches, magic and spells, rather. Those are really just Greek goddesses, or goddesses, I can't remember if Hecate is Greek, um, but they're goddesses. And then I did my Black Widow spider lady, and she was more Halloween than the two goddesses. But this one is undeniably a Halloween painting. After all, she has her spider and bat decoration. She's got a nice pumpkin there. The ubiquitous black cat. She's got her potion bottles. And she has a bit of a witchy look about her. And her cute little bat barrette. That's one of my favorite parts of this painting. However, I wanted to go a little non-traditional in a couple of ways. And one of those is the teal background. Because teal isn't typically thought of as a Halloween color. It's usually black, purple, orange, green, and of course red for blood. And usually, you know, teal and pink aren't in that mix, but both of them are in this painting. Because I wanted, I wanted it to be bright, I wanted it to be colorful, and I wanted it to be fun, and yet still really classic. It's obviously Halloween. I like bringing together stuff that doesn't normally make sense together and making it kind of go. And I think the teal background color on this works really, really well. I think it's... It did turn out to be a really bright and colorful painting, which is exactly what I was going for. I love the orange color of her hair. My hair has been this color the majority of my life. Either this or like a, a red red, like a blood red. Been blonde more recently, but historically it was always orange or red. I had a lot of fun coming up with all the little details to put in this piece, and I don't I don't typically do detailed backgrounds like this. It's honestly a bit tedious for my taste. It can be a bit busy for my taste as well, but in this case I do. I really like how it turned out. So in this one, we have some classic elements. We have the cauldron, the pumpkin, the cat, the potion bottles. My cat just made a weird noise. Um, we have the, the jar of eyeballs, the jar with the brain in it. Uh, we have tentacles, some kind of speckled eggs. We have a plant that kind of has a little Shop of Horrors vibe. She has lots of candles, of course. And Halloween decorations. She's got her little spider garlands up at the top. Those I actually were a last minute decision. I knew I wanted something else in there. And at the point that I'm saying this, I probably haven't even drawn them in yet. But you'll see them. Anyway, uh, last minute decision. I decided to make garlands with spiders to take up that little bit of excess space at the top. So I knew I wanted it to be some kind of Halloween decoration. But it took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do. And then she also has some little bat garlands by her hand. And she's got on kind of a cute witchy vibing outfit as she makes her concoctions. And then of course there's the, the cage next to her that has some kind of critter with evil looking eyes in it. It's not her cat though because obviously the cat's on the table. But who knows what's in that crate but it doesn't look happy and I'm sure she has it locked up for a reason. I struggled a little bit painting the background when I came to the teal color because it, it was difficult to balance getting it as cleanly smooth of a wash as I could but also avoiding the candle flames and painting around all those little objects because there, there's so much here that I had to work around and it, it was a little challenging when I was painting in the teal. It also, in some ways, it made it easier because the areas of flat wash were made smaller. It's just the edges of those flat washes were far more detailed. All in all, I really like how she came out. I struggled a bit with the purple tablecloth. And again, that was a matter of trying to work around those fine details and still keep a smooth wash. But also, the paints that I used for that shade of purple, they react a little weirdly. Um, so I did want to talk a little bit about the paint that I've been using and what I like about it and what I don't. And I've mentioned it before, I use Core Watercolor. That's, for those of you unfamiliar, that's Q-O-R. And the set that I use is 24 colors. So it has Permanent Scarlet, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, and I apologize if I butcher any of these names because I guarantee I'm going to butcher at least one of them. Quinacrinone Magenta, Cadmium Red Medium, Transparent Pyrrol Orange, Cadmium Yellow Primrose, <laughs> Darylide Yellow, I think, Nickel Azo Yellow, Quinacrinone Gold, Green Gold, Sap Green, Viridian Green, Van Dyke Brown, Payne's Gray, Neutral Tint, Raw Umber, Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, Titanium White, Dioxazine Purple, Cobalt Teal, Cerulean Blue Chromium, Thalo Blue, and Ultramarine Blue. So what little you can see of my palette in my videos, I don't think you can usually see the whole thing. But in the approximately six months that I've been using this palette, all these pans were filled to about the same level and some of them are nearly empty now. So I can kind of tell which colors I gravitate to the most. And those are the um, Quinacridone Magenta, the Quinacridone Gold, the Sap Green, and the Viridian Green, the Violet, the Thalo Blue, and the Neutral Tint, and 
the paints gray. Those are clearly my favorites because they are mostly gone and I actually need to refill them. So I have found some of the colors work in mysterious ways, I guess is the best way of putting it. Like the magenta, as much as I love it, is one of those colors that, what's the best way of putting this? It's a color that if I go over another color with the magenta, like as a glaze, if the first color was darker, it'll actually, it almost feels like it lightens it a little bit. It's really strange how it lifts the color underneath and then goes over top of it. And then the yellows and the cobalt teal. They seem to have some white to them because they have this weird kind of almost opacity. They almost act like gouache in a way. Like they're not quite as pronounced in their qualities as gouaches, but it's not far enough for my taste because I really don't, I don't like the way gouache behaves. I find it extremely difficult to paint with it and get any kind of good result. And I haven't practiced with it enough and I haven't used it particularly recently, but it's almost, it's like chalky and weird and it, it just goes down strange. Like from what it looks like mixed to what actually shows up on the paper when it's dry is really different to me. And it might just be the ones that I've tried and the methods I've used and such, but so far for me, I have not figured out how to use gouache effectively. So those three colors, the yellows and the, the cobalt teal are not my favorite. And that becomes a challenge because when I get a, when I want to get a really bright poppy green, I need a good yellow because the greens that are in here, the viridian is really, really blue and it kind of has a similar quality as the magenta. The way it goes down is a little odd and the sap green goes down beautifully, but it's almost too gold. And when I use a green, what I personally really, really like is a lime green, like a bright, bright lime green. I mean, I'm just, I'm drawn to bright colors in general. I don't know if you've noticed that, but it's definitely a thing. So I've done my best to try to mix them and get the shade of green I want, and I did get another yellow. I mentioned it in a previous video, I believe it's a Daniel Smith, I don't have it in front of me right this moment, um, but I got a different yellow that doesn't have as much of that opacity issue, and it works pretty well. That's the one I usually dip into when I use yellow these days. But overall, I found that, especially when working with skin tones, whatever colors of paint I mix to get a skin tone, which usually includes one of the browns, whether it's the Van Dyke, the raw umber, or the burnt sienna, or the raw sienna, something in their granular it's weird and while the paint is in my palette and still really wet with a lot of water mixed in it it separates which is really odd because most of the other colors I don't have the issue with so I actually have to once I mix a skin tone depending on which paints I put into it I have to remix it every time I go to dip into it otherwise I'll get different shades because some of the paint separated to the bottom Using the core colors, I've been really, really happy with them. They've worked out really well. I don't have a ton of experience with watercolor or other brands of watercolor, so I can't really do a good compare and contrast or speak a lot from experience. I can only say this particular set of watercolors I've mostly been happy with. So I do want to get another brand or two and try them out and experiment more and see what I really like and what I don't like. And I'll probably end up with a palette that mixes several different brands, which I know a lot of artists do, because you find your favorites and the ones that work best for you. And you know, why not kind of put together your own custom set that really works? So that's something I want to do in, in the next few months to a year. Um, like I'm not going to run out and buy several expensive watercolor sets anytime soon, but sometime in the next, you know, six months or so, I'd like to work on that and start testing out some other sets of watercolors to see how they are. And this is the palette that I'm using. It's just a custom palette. I got it uh, on Amazon. Originally, it had two flaps that opened. I took the other one off because it was a bit much. And this one, once I mix in one of the pans, I just kind of let the color sit there and I'll just come back and reuse it later. And you can see by looking at it, the colors that I gravitate to most because it's all... It's mostly cool colors. Right now there is a red in there, but for the most part, it's a couple different blues. There's kind of a green and kind of a purple. And I know for a while there, there was like a magenta-y thing going on at a magenta moment. So yeah, all in all, I'm really happy with the core watercolors and you can look forward to some videos in the future where I test out other sets of watercolors and that way I can give my opinion and I can compare them to the core watercolors. So yeah, there's some more in-depth information about the watercolors that I use. I hope that you enjoyed the Halloween-themed paintings I've been doing this month. My first video for November is going to be something really special. It's actually part of a collaboration. I'm super excited about it. Totally different than my usual videos. It's going to be a Zodiac-themed collaboration where each of us took a Zodiac sign. I picked Aquarius because it's my sign. And we did an illustration of it and then animated it. And then basically just put it to, you know, chill out, study kind of music. And who knows, if you guys like it, I'll make more of those because it was a lot of fun to create the artwork and then do the animation, which it was a learning curve and it was challenging, but it was also very fun. I may do more videos like that in the future. 
So I'm really excited for that video to come out. And then after that video is released, the next video after that is going to be the process of creating that artwork. So that'll be coming out after this video will be the art process of drawing my Aquarius piece. And yeah, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week.